in the 75 gallon, the lights don't create that much heat on the surface. So a total of 20 milliliters each. They always like to do that. Today I'm gonna to tell you a little bit about the yellow tang, which is aquacultured. And the file fish. Not a big in-depth thing, actually just my plan for it. I had a couple questions about my lighting. A few people thought that it would heat my water up too much and how do I keep my heat down? And we're also gonna talk about balancing. I know I mentioned before that I was trying to get my DKH, alkalinity, and pH all stabilized. That's all done now. Let's start out with a little game right off the bat. See how long it takes for you to spot the file fish. It's hard, right? At first, when I first saw it, I went, oh no, he jumped out. I couldn't find him. Every time I look in that tank, I do not find him. Sometimes 10 seconds I'm looking around. File fish changes color to fit his surroundings. If he's up in the corner, obviously I can see him. But if he's down among the Kenya tree or down low, I never find him right away. So how long did it take you? LEDs are not that hot. They're hot right up against them. If you're right up against it, it's hot. But eight to 10 inches away, it's not a problem. It's between 76 and 78, usually in the morning. And if it warms up throughout the day, it gets to about 78. Two degrees in a 12 hour period is not going to harm anything. A matter of fact, I noticed the tank does better at lower temperature when it's 77. or even 76, everything looks really nice. Yellow tang and the file fish came from Biota Marine. I've talked about them. They are in Florida and they aquaculture fish. Oh, come, he's coming with my tang. It's gonna be the size of a quarter and my file fish. I'm gonna go get him. Coldest it's been all winter. Aquacultured yellow tang. Look at them, that means there was enough heat in there. Their technique is the Tom Reefer technique. Float for 15 minutes, put them right in the tank. I usually don't do lights out, but they recommend lights out. They sent me bigger fish. My tang was supposed to be an inch and a half. That's like the size of a quarter. It's more like two inches. All right, so you can see what I got going on down there. There's the box, they're floating in there with lights out. Come on, dude, don't die on me. Is he dead? He's been from Florida, York Airport. I had the light out and they're floating over there. File fish looks really nice, but he's just vertical. If you follow Biota's acclimating directions, they'll credit you the fish. So I think he's a goner. I'm going to take a picture of it and then email it to them and say he must have too cold. Yellow Tang is really moving around in there. He's gonna make it, I can tell. Just a miraculous comeback on that file fish. I was ready to put him in the waste can and I saw a tiny flutter of his dorsal fin. And I said, maybe he can make it. And sure enough. Yellow Tang and most Tangs are extremely shy in the beginning. Every time I go up to the tank, he completely freaks out. See, this is an example of what the Tang does when I move in front of the tank. He gets startled. 
it takes him a while to calm down. So he's yellow, but he's not that deep, rich yellow that I'd like, but he's healthy. <music> See, from the side, he look, doesn't look as yellow as he should be. I haven't seen the file fish eat any large Aptasia. I've noticed he's eating really tiny ones, and you'll notice his feeding form, if you want to call it. It's always nose down into the sand bed, into the bottom, but he does take free-floating food when I feed it. Hawaii is no longer allowing the capture of the yellow tank. I was told that if you let it settle in, feed it well, it will color up and get yellow. I'm waiting until it gets a nice deep yellow before I put it in the tank. And I don't want it to have to fight for food. So I'm gonna keep the tang in here for another few weeks until I see it getting more yellow. And I don't know about the file fish. I know they're known to nip at some zoas. I don't know if he's going in there. It's a cool fish, but it's kind of cool on its own. I don't know how it would do in the 75 gallon, so I may keep him in there for a while. He may be okay if I decide to go with seahorses in that tank. He's very docile, he moves really slow. I'd have to research that. I don't want him biting a tail on a seahorse. What I've told people in the past is that when you're two-part dosing, you can't use one or the other. You have to use them together and you'll find that over time, they reach equilibrium. So at first my calcium was really high and I gave it a week at the same dose of each one and I noticed the calcium started to come down and the alkalinity started to go up. Right now my C balance quantity is 10 mils of each alkalinity and calcium two times per day. So a total of 20 milliliters each in the 75 gallon and that's over a 12 hour period. I start dosing at about 10 p.m. and then I dose again at 7 a.m. in the morning and then during the day I don't. It could be because the tank, now that it's settled in, is starting to use up the calcium. I'm already noticing some SPS growth. It's a little bright in the back, but I'm tired of messing with it. If I turn it down, the corals start to close up, so it'll have to be bright. 